Hey everyone, my name is Jason. I'm a community manager at Coffee Stain Studios. And today I'm gonna to be talking about some changes coming to the vehicle system in update five for Satisfactory. Now you might be one of the people who think, oh, vehicles, I don't really use them. They're kind of like, it's kind of tiring to record them all the time and they get stuck and things like that. I don't really use vehicles. I don't care about this video. Well, we have heard that kind of feedback from people. We, and, and that's what we're addressing in update five. And also that's what I'm talking about in this video. So do stick around. Before I get into it, I just wanna kind of plug Satisfactory just for a minute. We don't really do that here, but the game is actually on sale right now. 20% off on the Epic store uh, up until the 23rd of September, I believe. So if you wanted to pick up the game for cheap, now's a great time to do it. Uh, do consider picking it up there. Link in the description down below if that's interesting to you. And let's move on to the video. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is actually, you know, some people, we, we've, we've revealed this actually, we've leaked it before. And some people, some people somehow guessed it. I cannot believe it. They guessed it exactly right, which is very impressive. And that was actually in the ramp railing video. There was a building in the background, kind of blurred out. And that's the truck station. So it's the same truck station as before, but it has a new mesh to it, has a new model, new look and feel. And this is what it looks like, looking good. One thing you'll notice though, is it now has two inputs and two outputs instead of just one. So the truck station has gotten a buff. It has double the throughput now. Uh, the truck station will also have a new UI. It's got a fresh new look. It also includes some extra information there like fuel per minute that is used by all the vehicles, calculated from all the vehicles used in the truck station. So now you know how much fuel to provide the truck station so that your vehicles will, will keep running. And also it will show how many items that is loaded and unloaded on average through that truck station. So those are the updates to that. Now, the meat and potatoes of this video is actually changes to, so some people want vehicles to maybe be quicker or more powerful or something here and there. We haven't made any changes to the vehicle's tuning or anything like that yet, but we've made a ton of changes to the automation system with the vehicles and uh, specifically to make them more reliable as uh, extensions of your factory, essentially. So let's go through those changes one by one. So first issue that some people had was that, you know, you would spend your time recording a path and the vehicle then would not actually follow that path exactly and sometimes get stuck. It might fall off a cliff or run into some trees or some bushes or something like that and just get stuck there because it didn't follow the path that you specifically recorded. So we've made some changes to the way that vehicles now follow waypoints so that they're now more true to your recorded path. They're not exact, they're not 100% exact, but they're much, much more accurate uh, to the path that you recorded as the player. Previously, the way that the vehicles worked is they they kind of didn't take future waypoints into, uh, into consideration. They just looked at their next waypoint, they drove at it, once they hit it, they then looked at the next waypoint and just drove straight at that. Now we're using these things called splines to smoothly connect the wave points. And what a spline is, is, is it's essentially a line that smoothly connects points together. And so you can see here in this sort of like little, little behind the scenes little look here, uh, there's the purple line, which is the spline connecting the waypoints. And there's a purple box, which is the vehicle's target, essentially the ideal target for the vehicle. The vehicle is just following that purple box along the spline. So like I said, this won't mean that the recordings will be 100% accurate to what you recorded as a player, but it will be much, much more uh, accurate and much more reliable. Now, even though it's more reliable, it's still possible that your vehicles will get stuck, okay? So they might get stuck on like a tree or something out in the wild, uh, or they might you know, be bumping on like a power pole or something like that within your factory. And so what we've also done is we've sort of uh, improved the handling of obstacles. So what the vehicles will now do is that if they bump into things, they'll sort of back up and find like a new path around the object that they've bumped into and try and go around that and, and then return back to the recorded path. So they're a little bit smarter when it comes to this. Uh, this isn't like a catch-all thing. You can't build a wall in the way. It doesn't regenerate an entire new path. It is a very sort of naive thing. So it is still possible that even though the obstacle avoidance is a little bit better now, or the obstacle handling rather, is a little bit better now, uh, it is still possible that things get stuck. So what happens in those cases, if your vehicle is well and truly stuck, like what if it falls off the edge of a cliff? Uh, like, like this vehicle here did, fell off the edge of the cliff. So we have a new system in place for this as well. This is the worst case scenario, last resort solution. And that is little tiny nano machines lift your vehicle through the ground back to where they were supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, was, we call this like ghosting. The vehicle ghosts back to where it was. This is a little weird. It's completely fine, right? Fix it, develop technology. It's it's fine, okay, it's fine. Don't worry about it. But what's more important here is that vehicles are reliable, right? So when you record a path and you want a vehicle to do something and then you go and play the game for another three or four hours doing something else and you check on your vehicles, what's most important right now is that your vehicles do make it, okay? And, and, and that the goods are delivered, right? So that's what we're, you know, this is the, the, the worst case scenario here. We would prefer 
this sort of like ghosting system uh, to vehicles getting stranded out in the wild. And I think I think you guys as players would would, would appreciate that as well. So uh, yeah, that's another change that's coming too. Another issue of unreliability with the vehicles before is that vehicles would stop running in the middle of their path because they ran out of fuel. And this can happen for a few reasons. It could be because you're not providing enough fuel, or it could be that if you have you know a truck coming after another truck, the first truck takes all the fuel or too much fuel, more than it needs, and, and doesn't leave enough fuel for the vehicle that comes directly after it. And so we've made some changes to help with uh, fuel in general as well. So, so as I said before, the truck UI is getting an update. It's showing how much fuel, how much of a given type of fuel is needed for all the vehicles using the truck station. So that's gonna help so people know how much they need to provide. The second thing that we're doing is that now, vehicles now calculate how much fuel they need for their routes and they only take how much they need. So that's the other important thing there. They'll never take too much. The next thing is that vehicles that get to a truck station that does not have enough fuel for them will wait for enough fuel. So they'll stay there, they'll wait till they have what they need to complete the their route, and then they'll, then they'll take off. And so a knock-on effect of this is that vehicles now require uh, their recordings to be a closed loop, okay? So now when you record your paths with your vehicles, this has changed as well. So you would you know, drive around like, like normal and in order to complete your recording, you need to touch the first node of the recording again and that ends recording and saves the recording. Uh, another issue with vehicles that people had is that it was annoying to re-record the same paths over and over and over uh, and try to get them right and try to get them reliable every time you wanted to add another vehicle to the truck station. And so introducing to you all the ability to save and load recorded paths. You can see here that you can uh, save your paths, you can name them, uh, and then you can just jump into another vehicle uh, and load that path as well. You can see the list of uh, paths that it can take and also uh, an overview of what the path looks like too. So yeah, that's a pretty significant change that I think you know people will be pretty excited about. You know, In order to scale up the throughput of your vehicles now, it's just as simple as just building another vehicle loading a path and then just telling it to go and then it's fine. One thing to note though is that this loading and saving of paths only work for vehicles of the same type. You can't record a path in an Explorer and then load it in a tractor, okay? So that's that's one limitation there. Now there's a couple of bonus little changes that are coming as well. These don't help with the reliability of the vehicles, but they're just sort of nice to have. Uh, so some of you might have noticed that when vehicles drive, when automated vehicles drive a certain distance away, they start like jittering, like teleporting from waypoint to waypoint. Uh, they don't really smoothly drive between where they're supposed to go. And that's because after a certain distance, we turn off their physics and we simulate them without physics. And we've made a change to this. So now that the vehicle is actually sort of smoothly using the splines that we mentioned before, they smoothly travel between their waypoints now and and from a distance it's actually pretty indistinguishable it's hard to even notice when that change happens so visually this looks a lot better so the next bonus thing that we're adding is the ability to add truck stations to a recorded path after the fact so you can record a path add a truck station have the docking area sort of overlap where the recorded path is and the truck station will then will actually like rework the waypoints of that segment of the recorded path and create a docking node there instead so that um, vehicles can then go and use that node. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. I hope you found the video interesting. I hope you're looking forward to some of these changes. I hope they're, you know, they're pretty exciting. If you like the video, please give it a like. If uh, you are interested in more Update 5 content and information, please consider subscribing because every Friday we're putting out like an informational video like this or a teaser trailer or something leading up to the release of Update 5. So do consider subscribing if you're interested in that. Thank you all very much for watching the video. I hope you're having a lovely day and have a lovely weekend and I'll see you all next week. Take care everyone. Bye bye.